Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Now surprisingly, the most interesting watch in my collection or contraption should I say turned out to be this, as most of you guys wanted to find out more about it, what it is, how to use it and where did I get it. So I promise to you guys that I'm going to be doing a video on it. I actually got this as a present 7, maybe even 8 years ago. So it's really a long time ago. And this is a pocket sundial, meaning that you can take it wherever you want with it and you can read the time with it using sun. Now I use it as a decoration in my car as it's hanging from my rear view mirror and it seems very appropriate for someone who's called the watch geek because it really is a conversation starter. Now I did some research on it after you guys asked and believe it or not this is still produced and you can actually buy it. The producer is named H.M. Kala and they're actually located in Austria where they make these and they're also available on Amazon so if you're from the US I would advise you to go to Amazon and get it and I'll leave a link in the description and since I also have an affiliate account with Amazon you'll also be helping the channel however if you're from Europe I would advise you to go directly from the producer because you don't have to pay any taxes or import duties and I'll leave that, that link in the description as well so how does this thing work well First of all, you need to tell the device what your latitude is, whether you're north or south and at what degrees of latitude. Secondly, you have to tell the clock what time of the year is by using this slider. And then you open it up, you hang it like this and you spin it until uh, this little hole projects a little light beam, not beam, but a light dot on this readout here so you can read the time. It's very simple but also very complicated, but I'll explain in detail how to actually set it up. Okay, so the first step, like I said, is to determine your latitude and I'm at 45 something degrees and set it up. And you have to know whether it's north or south. Now, if you look at this sun clock, it actually has two faces. On this, which is called the front, you have the degrees written right here, then you have some major cities with their latitudes written here, then you have degrees right here again, again some cities, and over here you have the time scale. The upside down actually just has major cities in the world with their designated uh, uh, latitudes written, so you don't have to google them if you're in any of these cities. And you have to remember which the front and which the back is because of the way you set it up. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, you set this up on the upper scale when you're looking at the front of the watch, of the, of the clock. If you're on the southern hemisphere, you set it up on this lower scale when you're looking at the face up. So I hope that's that's clear. Since we're on the northern, we're gonna look look at here. If you were on the southern, you would set it up on this lower one, so you would twist it like this, and you will know which one is upper and lower by these, because this is how the clock is supposed to stand when it's you know in the front face up. So I'm at 45 something. So since this is held with this wire, you can actually slide it on the clock like this. I don't know if you can see it. So you can do a whole turn. Now this would be setting up the southern hemisphere. So let's go back to northern and we'll try to set it up to 45. I'll have to do it probably off camera. There, this is probably 45. Let me try and zoom in. You even have this little arrow, arrow on this to show you, to help you get more precise. Once you've set that up, you take a look at this. Now I'll just move the slider so you can see. If you can see this also has the northern and the southern. The southern has the S, so if you're in the southern hemisphere you would twist it like this and set the slider according to this. Since we're on the northern, we're gonna leave it like this. And if you look at closely, closely you will see that the clock has the first names of months. Now since this is a cycle of how the earth moves around the, around the sun and you're tilted so that's why your angle changes, it will go 
January, February, March, all the way to July, and then June it turns back and goes back. This is why you have these letters doubled. So you have January, February, now it's August, so we have to get to the A, like so. And you have the A here. So this is July and August. And each month actually has three little uh, lines. So you have the beginning, the middle, and the end of the month. Since it's beginning of July, we're going to slide it to the first to the first light uh, to the first line of the August like so now you've set up the date and that's pretty much it once you set up the watch I mean the clock like this you can now close it wear it in your pocket or have it hanging on your on your rear view mirror when you want to use it you simply open the hour disk and then you have to you know hang it like this and turn it slowly until you get the dot passing through and hitting the dial. Now one more thing is that you have the AM and PM. So this is how the watch, how the clock starts. So this is AM and here is noon and this is PM. So this is zero, this is midnight. So if you're uh, in the AM, you would twist this so that it uh, casts the, the, the dot on this side and you would tr uh, turn it and look for the dot on that side. If it's PM, you have to understand that if it's PM, you have to uh, look for the dot on this side, up to here. So this is, like I said, midnight. Otherwise, you're going to get incorrect readings. So you just hang it, and let's say if it's PM, you would look at this scale here. And you turn it until you get the little dot to show up on this disk right here. And you can actually adjust this to get the dot more um, in intensity, if you like. So if you line it up with the sun and you realize that it's actually standing like this, so the dot is not passing uh, fully, you can freely turn it like this because it doesn't change the position of the dot. It just changes the intensity. And reading like this is not really accurate. I mean, it gives you the real uh, solar time as they call it so you have to ignore the DST so let's say today is the summer time we have the DST in my time zone meaning that if I read the time off of this it's gonna be by one hour less than what, what's what my clock what my watch is gonna show other things include that because at certain times of the year and at certain uh, latitude settings uh, the accuracy can be pretty off up to 15 minutes and sometimes even more but we'll see that when I take it outside and we take a reading. Anyways, that's it. So now time to read the time. Okay guys, so we're outside now. And like I said, this is midnight. So you want to look at the AM scale because it's currently AM. You don't want to read the time on this. So to read it, you open it up. You put the clock, I mean this scale opposite of the sun so that the little dot can go, uh, so that the little lot can project on it. And you slowly twist it and turn it until you get the little dot on the scale and there it is as you can see it just showing up right there like so and if we look at the reading it's six something so about 615 because this is where we read it and this is where seven is so the first quarter after six so probably 615 now if we take a look at my clock it's 716 so pretty accurate and remember this is the DST time and this is standard time so if we subtract the one hour that we artificially added to have the DST it would the real time is actually 616 which is exactly what we read on this clock now this accuracy actually changes during the day as well so around noon uh, it can drift off quite a bit but at these times between you know 3 and I don't know 7 8 it's pretty accurate well that's it I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on how to use this archaic method of, of reading time but it is one of the most reliable methods one has to admit it doesn't use the battery nor motion of your hands it uses the celestial body so nothing can be more reliable Anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.